I'm Joe Lample. When I created Growing a Greener World, I had one goal, to tell stories of everyday people, innovators, entrepreneurs, forward-thinking leaders, who are all, in ways both big and small, dedicated to organic gardening and farming, lightening our footprint, conserving vital resources, protecting natural habitats, making a tangible difference for us all. They're real, they're passionate, they're all around us. They're the game changers who are literally growing a greener world and inspiring the rest of us to do the same. Growing a greener world, it's more than a movement, it's our mission. Community gardens. We hear the term now more than ever. And according to the National Community Gardening Association, the definition is simply any piece of land gardened by a group of people. Now as simple as that definition sounds, the benefits of these type of gardens are far reaching, transcending cultural and generational barriers. When we garden together, we enhance not only our quality of life, but that of our families and communities by providing a catalyst for enhancing self-reliance, beautifying neighborhoods, providing nutritional food, and reducing family food budgets. In addition, we're creating urban ecosystems and conserving resources and creating opportunities for education, therapy, exercise, and recreation. Bobby Wilson is president of the American Community Gardening Association. Along with his ever-present passion for his work lies an army of like-minded volunteers and leaders and some impressive resources to help spread the gospel of community gardening. We have a big lunch in community gardening going on across America right now for a lot of different reasons. Uh, one of the major reasons is that the First Lady put in a garden at the White House. It's the first garden that has been put in at the White House since uh, World War I and World War II. Uh, we finally got a Secretary of Agriculture that has acknowledged inner city agriculture so uh, Secretary Vilsack has a program uh, around inner city agriculture. Uh, lots of people are concerned about where their food comes from. So more and more people want to grow their own food. So more and more people want their children uh, to be exposed to the environment so they can get a good positive feeling. And we want our children to know where the food comes from. So many of our children think food comes from the grocery store. They have no idea that it comes from the soil. The American Community Gardening Association is a bi-national organization that provides technical assistance to individuals and groups that has a desire and a means to want to grow their own fresh vegetables. Community gardening is about building communities, making the community that you are part of stronger so that you can deal with the challenges within that community. And that's what the American Community Gardening Association is all about. It's providing that network of people, resources, so that you can make your community a much better place to live and grow in. Along with all the resources that the National Community Gardening Association deploys across the country, they've also put a big investment right here into Columbus, Ohio. Exactly. Uh, the American Community Gardening Association is excited about our new home right here at Franklin Park Conservatory. It's an excellent opportunity. It's a good central location. It gives us means that we can disperse across the country to really do some exciting things with all sorts of communities across North America. Mm. And we're just so excited to be here at, at this new facility that they have put together. And they really gave the American Community Gardening Association a new home. Yeah. A new home so that we can provide the technical assistance to communities across the country that is really needed in order for community gardens to be successful. You may not have known this, 
But in 2009, in 2010, uh, seed companies, they have sold more vegetable seeds than they've sold flower seeds. This trend goes back to 2000, this goes back to World War I, World War II. So people are really concerned and really interested in growing their own vegetables. And we, would, we, we see this trend continuing on into the future, that people really want to know how to grow their own fresh vegetables. Mm -hmm. It's an exciting time to be involved in the gardening greening movement. As, as you know, people have been gardening for a long time. <laughs> yes. We have gardens in Atlanta that's 35 years old. Huh. So <laughs> community gardens have been around that long. Not just gardening, but community gardening. But more and more people are doing community gardening. Young people, old people, black people, white people, mm. everybody want to be involved in this gardening green movement. Let's take it to the next level. Let's make it successful. Let's make sure that people are not only growing vegetables to feed themselves, but they are also growing their communities to make them exciting, to make them a better place. And we are going to make it happen through Franklin Park Conservatory and the American Community Gardening Association. A great day for gardening, great day for gardening. <laughs> it is indeed. No matter where you live, chances are there's a community garden near you. In Seattle, Washington, Interbay Pea Patch is known as the Garden Between the Bays. It's one of the largest and most involved community gardens around and a shining example of resourcefulness and sustainability. Ray Schutte is the site coordinator. To say he loves spending time here would be an understatement. He's gifted thousands of volunteer hours to make community gardening in Seattle possible for anyone willing to get their hands dirty. Ray, from the moment I pulled up here, I've met a lot of people. Some of them are new gardeners, or at least new to Interbay. But then a lot of the people that I meet here have been here a really long time, including you. It's true, I've been here for 15 years. Most people have been here since 1973, 74. There's four or five of those still around. But it's very much like the neighborhood. It's very much like any good community. There's a group of people that are older and they, they pass knowledge and, you know, and share ideas and stories and culture. And there's always new people that come into that and they're welcomed into that and made a part of the community. Yeah, this is a community garden that's been here a long time. What's the history of it? This used to be a dump in, 19, in uh, 1930. And in the 1960s, it was uh, capped with clay, mm -hmm. uh, clay capped, 15 foot deep and they parked cars here for the World's Fair. <laughs> but then in 73, these group of people started gardening and then they decided to build a golf course. And they moved those people, disrupted their lives, in 1980, okay? And at that time, the city council laid out an acre in this area for a community garden forever. And they gave it some political strength sitting behind it. And they moved those gardeners to another location. In 1996, they decided to build another golf course. And this time they needed to move the garden to build a new golf course, okay? Yeah. Those moves did some interesting things because it built a town or community. When a community goes through adversarial events, they bond and they bond tightly. And although you lose a certain percentage of them, like between the second move and the third move, we lost 20, 25% of the gardeners. Huh. Those people that were left really bonded tightly and so they, they get to know each other tighter. Okay? Yeah. And, that, and that provided a cultural base. Well, how many people are actively gardening here now? We have about 125 gardeners this year at Interbay, uh, spread over an acre. Is there a waiting list? There's a waiting list of 203 people. Gosh. It takes about two years to get into this garden. Uh huh. So literally they're either dying off or probably moving away. That's true. And so we have a turnover somewhere between 10, somewhere around 10% a year, 10 to 12% a year is the turnover in this garden. Uh, and bringing in new blood. And, um, we like it, we get new families, people with little kids, and people that haven't been married yet, you know. And, uh, what do you see as, as one of the main attractions to this garden, and community gardening in general? Well, it's, well, first and foremost, I think in a community garden is this whole business of uh, urban isolation. It breaks it down. People get to know each other. You get to know each other people slowly in a garden. It's not like you have an event that everybody's at every Sunday, like a church, uh -huh. okay? So it takes time to get to know your neighbors, but you get to know them. Right. That's the first thing, so it's a social thing. But most importantly, soil is a great equalizer. <laughs> Whether you're rich, 
okay? Whether you're whatever, the soil's gonna treat you fairly, the weather's gonna treat you fairly, it puts everybody on the bottom rung. Yeah. There's here, all the composting materials that come here, the recycling and all that kind of stuff for building the soil are all free, uh -huh. okay? So it doesn't matter how much money you have, you're on the same ground footing as I am. You have any plans to check out of this garden anytime soon? Our uh, death do us part. <laughs> okay, <All right. laughs> really simple. What a great way to go. <laughs>
I love coming to community gardens and pea patches because of all the different things you see here. And one of my favorite parts, all the different people you meet. Now you have a lot of experienced gardeners that have been doing it all their lives, and then you have the newbies where they come and learn everything about gardening right here. And then you have a lot of people in the middle. Now I met Jude Berman, she's one of those people that already knew a good bit about gardening, but she's learned a lot more since she's been here at Interbay. Hey Jude. Hey Joe. So you're one of those gardeners who is not necessarily brand new to gardening. You've flower gardened for a while, but food gardening is new to you, right? Food gardening happened when I moved to Seattle about six years ago for the man I love. Uh huh. And I got here and I didn't know anybody except the man I love. And I found this garden right next to where I lived and met Deb and the food bank crew. Started working every Tuesday night in the food bank gardens, learning all about vegetables. And then I became a garden groupie. And before I even had my own plot, yeah. I had to wait a whole year on the waiting list, but I was here for every event and every potluck and every work party and you name it, every fundraiser, I was here. So you've learned a few things about food gardening since then, right? I feel like, I hesitate to say, but something of an expert. Fantastic. Well, I see that you've got some good success. Tell me about what you've got planted here. Okay, because it looks like I just put in some little gem romaine lettuce, mm -hmm. which I started from seed at home on my balcony. Wow, look at that. And what they'll look like in a couple of months is this little guy over there. So when, when did that go in the ground? That went in last fall uh -huh. and lived under plastic for the winter. And basically in the winter it doesn't grow very much, but as soon as it warms up it starts to grow. So I've been harvesting away, as you can see, there are little holes in there because <laughs> we've been eating a lot of us. Uh, yeah, you've been harvesting and away. This, this is, is dinner, supper. right? This is supper. This is dinner. Red sails, right? Red sails. And we have some cinnamon romaine over there and we got spinach over there and I grow as many greens as I possibly can. You said something about when it gets to midsummer what happens in I have as about 90% of what we eat on the table comes from the garden and you know if I could raise goats in the garden, I would. <laughs> so I'm really not a vegetarian, but I might as well be. Oh, fantastic. Well, it looks like you were off to a great start for this season, and I'll let you, you were hard at work, I'll let you get back at it. That's great. But uh, congratulations on everything you've learned so far. Thank What's the you. best part about this for you? <sighs> everything. Yeah. It grounds me. Yeah. You know, I work at home at my computer, and I come out here, and I'm connected to the soil, and I'm out in nature, and I have all these wonderful friends yeah. in my community here. It's it makes my life complete. Excellent. Here you go. Thank Got you. Got some more planning to do. Yeah. Thanks a lot. Thanks, Joe. See you later. Take care. You know, I love the cool winter nights because it allows me to make some really great stews and soups. And that's why I'm using kale today, some of the best stuff that Mother Nature has to offer. And it's really, really easy to use and it's extremely nutritious as well. To boot, kids don't have to know, it's delicious. One of the things I'm making today, a ribolita soup, which is kind of like a minestrone soup the day after when you reintroduce the soup in a different way. That's exactly what this is. And best of all, all in one pot, okay? So we're starting with some of this delicious applewood smoked bacon. And I'm starting in a cold pot, okay, without any oil. That's where a little bit of the fat from the bacon is coming into play. All I have to do is chop this up pretty thin, put it in the cold pot, and that's when I'll turn on the heat. And that goes in. All right, so the best thing about winter stews as well is the building of flavors. We're gonna start with the bacon, which has a smoky flavor. Now we're gonna add some garlic and onions, all right? So just take the skin right off the onion, I'll dice it, and we're well on the way to ribbly to soup. And in the pot it goes. So we'll stir this around. You can already smell that bacon, applewood smoked bacon. This is when the neighbors come knocking on your door and say, what is that amazing smell? Well, it's gonna be Ribolita in about a half an hour, I'll tell you. And the next thing that goes in there, fresh garlic. Get that little punch of fresh garlic in there. Now we're talking about building of flavors. We have the bacon, some uh, onions, and also the garlic. Let's add a little kick, a little bit of heat in there. So that's why we have these great red pepper flakes, okay? I'm adding them now because the oil and the red pepper flakes mixes with the fat and the oil with the bacon, and that's what makes it all come together. Give it a quick stir. All right, now let's build on top of that still. How about some carrots, delicious. All right, now when you're cutting these carrots, you actually wanna cut them fairly thin, okay? Because that'll help it cook faster. Half an hour, dinner is on the table. And the carrots want to join the fun, 
in they go. All right, fantastic flavors we have going on. I want maybe a little bit more on the side of sweetness. That's where this little gem comes into play. Fennel, celery works fine, but when you have fennel, it has the same crunch, but this brings a certain like sweetness to the game. So I'm gonna dice this up and then it goes. Oh yeah, you smell that? It smells like the licorice from fennel, that bacon, amazing. Okay. And the next thing is just everybody jumps in the pool at the same time, which is okay. We're gonna have these wonderful cannellini beans. You can use great northern beans, any old white beetle work fine, all right? They will go in, they jump on in, and then we have these tomatoes. You know what? Fresh tomatoes are great, but only when they're in season. Canned tomatoes are fantastic in the middle of winter time because they're canned at the peak of their flavor. And these are even better because they're like roasted tomatoes, which gives an extra little something to your dish when they jump into. I'm gonna add a little bit of fresh herbs. This is thyme, okay? And we'll just put the thyme in whole like this because at the end, we can just pull the stems out, just like this, all right? Chicken stock, homemade chicken stock. And the last thing to go in, last but not least, is this amazing kale. And all I've done is I just pull them off the main rib just like that into pieces. And here we go. Everybody in the pool. Now I can kind of push it down with a spoon, and that's just about it. So we'll wait for this to come to a simmer, and we come back, it'll smell. Pull up a chair, guys, it's perfect, it's amazing. Get a little bit of that heat from the red pepper flakes, the sweetness from that fennel, the beans, the kale, it's all right there. And actually, I decided not to blend it because I like to showcase all that great stuff. Just like that. Ooh, don't forget about that homemade chicken stock, and that's why I'm saving all this stuff over here. I don't want to compost it, but it has plenty of flavor, use it for chicken stock. Also had a little bit of bread left over, slice them up, toasted it and made what's called crostini, and that goes great with this soup. A little drizzle of olive oil, and nothing says Italian more than Parmigiano Reggiano, right over top. And if you want this recipe, and any other thing that I've done on this show, right there, growingagreenerworld.com, and it's all there for you all the time. And there we go, guys. Winter time, never tasted so good. People that garden in a community setting get much more than just the produce or flowers. The shared experience of cultivating the soil and growing plants are only part of a bigger picture. The various opportunities to engage in group projects really grow a strong community between the volunteers. The gardens are often just the glue that holds that community together. Community gardens and pea patches are so much more than just the gardening. For me, it was the great soup today. Oh, and I enjoyed being outside in the fresh air and the sunlight. And also, you guys allowing us to break bread with you and giving back to the community that you support. Gene, how about you? What was your best part of today? Having you lovely, gorgeous <laughs> young people come it's see us. <laughs> cheers, cheers to that. For the entire Growing a Greener World crew and all our new best friends, thanks for joining us. We'll see you back here next time for more Growing a Greener World. All right. But it's not just about growing food for themselves that keeps them coming back. That's right. It's about the... <laughs> <laughs> it's about, it's about giving, do you want to stress giving? But it's not just the, sorry, but it's not just about the food they grow for themselves that keeps them coming back. That's right, it's about giving back to the shared experience of experiencing Mother Nature. And here we go. Ready? Action. Three. This is a shared experience. This is a shared experience. Connecting, that's what it is. Action. Connecting, thank you. Three. Action. Three, two.